Uh, hey guys, welcome back to Student Pages Podcast. Uh, I'm joined today by Lexi Duncan. How are you doing, Lexi? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for having me. No, no worries. Good to have you. Um, I just thought we'd talk a little bit first about how you got into acting, obviously. So your, your first proper role was you did a musical. You were in Mary Poppins, right? I was. That was my first professional job at 11. I played Jane Banks um, in the Australian production of the Disney Cameron Macintosh musical, Mary Poppins, yeah. And would you say that made you fall in love with acting straight away? I think so. It was definitely a pinnacle moment where I, I guess, sort of decided that acting could be a career. And I think before that, it was very much just a hobby for me. And doing that show for a year definitely made me realise that I wanted to pursue it professionally. Oh, so when, when you were doing it as a hobby, was that just at school? Yeah, so I started off, I mean, what really introduced me to the industry was just singing for my family. I have a big extended family and I would always get up on the table and sing at Christmases and things like that. And then I got into some school musicals. We had Annie and Aladdin that I did. And then Mary Poppins came on, uh, came up about a year after those musicals. And Nice. And uh, what, what did you learn from doing that? Well, I think just as a kid being up close and witnessing all these actors performing right in front of you and getting to work with them so young was invaluable, you know? So I think definitely that, and then just having the introduction to working professionally. I mean, as a kid, you don't work every single day, but you sort of get an insight of how much time and energy these, these actors have to give. And uh, yeah, I learned so much um, just at 11. It was insane. Is that hard to try and be professional when you're 11? I think so. Uh, I think I definitely knew it was a really big deal and you always want to act like the adult. So I, I think we, uh, there were 10 kids in the show. There were five Janes and five Michaels. I think we all sort of tried to act very adult and very professional. I don't know how we succeeded, but I think we all wanted to, to really act professional at that age and not be immature. <laughs> and I feel like with child acting, sometimes you're, you're sort of putting yourself out there and maybe some other kids can react badly to that. Did you feel like uh, other kids were supportive of you or, or not? Um, yes and no. I think at my age, a lot of the kids didn't really know what I was doing. I went to school one day a week to sort of collect my work. And then Disney, we had a tutor who would come to the theatre and we'd, all the Janes and Michaels would do their work together. So I was, there was this weird thing where I was at school, but then I wasn't. So I wasn't really gone for a long time where everyone would be like, Lexi's back. But I don't think most of the other 10 and 11 year olds in my year really knew what I was doing. I think they kind of got it, but then didn't really, but no one was, was mean or anything. I just think at that age, people didn't really understand yeah, what I was up to. <laughs> and what, what advice would you have given to yourself at that point that you could go back now and give yourself advice? I think I probably would have said I didn't do a lot of dancing before I did Mary Poppins and that show is filled with tap and some really intense choreography and I think that was really daunting for me at first and I I would have just said to myself you are going to get it so don't worry about stressing about it just be as confident as you can and and know that you're going to get it because it, it all does come together I think so often we stress about you know am I going to be able to remember my lines or and it always comes together so I probably would have just said that uh, it was your your dog was called Poppins? Yes, my dog, my Pomeranian. He's actually in the other room. Yes, I named him after the show. <laughs> He's okay, a boy, was, but he doesn't mind. seem to mind. That's not a coincidence then that you... No, it's definitely not. I got him when I was 13, so a couple of years after doing the show and I... Okay, and then, and then how soon after that did you move to LA? Well, I moved to LA when I was almost... I, I was about to turn 19, so I finished school and... Then I did a year at NIDA, which for those who don't know, is the National Institute of Dramatic Arts here. It's where a lot of Australian actors go, like Mel Gibson and Kate Blanchett. And I, I did the full-time musical theatre course there for a year. Yeah, so I, um, I finished the year there and I decided, because I had the American dual citizenship, I decided to make the bold move over there and do lots of acting classes, which led me to sort of set up my team over there as well. And it was an amazing year. I think I learned so much, just not even just in the acting part of life. I, you know, was independent over there. I was living by myself and then with a roommate and, you know, you just grow up when you're out of home and in a different country. It was a great experience. Exciting and challenging at the same time or more exciting than challenging? Definitely. I would say 50, 50. Now that 
I've I've done Young Rock. I, I I get a lot of opportunities to audition for things, and it's made me really grateful that I I have that foot in the door, and people are going to see my tapes because a, a lot of the time before, you know, I either wouldn't get the audition or I'd self tape, and I wouldn't know if anyone's going to see it. Now I I often do get some feedback, and it's it makes me really grateful that that I am getting that now. Is there anything you do in auditions to to kind of give yourself an edge? That's hard. I mean. I think I like to have my auditions be quite text-based. So I really delve into what the writer wants and the character stuff and the thoughts of the character. And I like to do a lot of work and feel very prepared so that I can go into the audition feeling really confident and then just throw it all away and let it go. Cause you don't want to go into an audition holding on so tightly because then things aren't organic and natural. So I'm the type of person who likes to be very prepared and then feel confident enough to just see what happens that, you know, whatever you've worked on, things are going to stick and it's going to be great. And, and what do you miss most about, about home? I suppose you're there now, but what? Well, what I'm here now, which is so great. Um, yeah. I've loved this time being at home. I would say when I'm in LA, I miss my family, first of all. And then I'm a big beach person. So I definitely miss the Sydney beaches. <laughs> Oh, they're superior to the LA beaches. Mm, yeah. So some some Californians would disagree with me, but until they've gone to Australian beaches, no, no. <laughs> I've I've been to beaches in LA, but I've never that's a little flex. But I've never been to beaches in Australia. Well, you have to go. I guarantee you'll think they're superior. And uh, okay, let's let's talk about Young Rock, of course. Um, yeah. What was what was it like? How 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 much did you get to kind of meet the Rock? Was he on set a lot? Well, The Rock actually wasn't in Brisbane. So he filmed, his, we filmed it at the show in Brisbane, which is an hour flight from where I am in Sydney. So I've only met The Rock on Zoom and on, on calls in our, in our table reads and things like that. But it felt like he was really there. I mean, he was very involved and he's honestly such a lovely guy. He was always available and personal and down to earth and funny. He's great. So it was it was very exciting and so exciting to be telling his story. Such an imposing guy, maybe a little bit. Is it easy to I think at first, at first it was a little daunting going into thinking, oh, like Dwayne's going to be in the meeting. Um, but as soon as he he sort of does like a nice introduction and says, you know, I'm so excited about this, he was just so warm. And I think it made everyone feel at ease. And he's, he is so down to earth that he, you just realise he is a normal guy and we are just putting together a show and... And how was how was that different to things that you'd worked on in the past? What what kind of you worked on between your kind of first few roles and then Young Rock? Yeah, but how how are they different? Well, I think Young Rock was the biggest, um, I guess, production that I'd been a part of. Um, the the only other film work that I'd done was on a TV show here called The Secret Daughter. I was on set for only one day. I was a small guest star, so this show was uh, on a huge scale and such a obviously it's the rock it's a huge production and show and I think everything about it was was new and different for me honestly I had and and I hadn't been on a set since I was 17 at the secret daughter when I did the secret daughter and then I was 20 when um, we started filming young rock so it had been like three years since I'd been on a set and in that time I had just been in classes and the thing I think I learned most was being on a set you learn so much there are things you can learn in a class but there are things that you can really only learn on set. Like what? Yeah. What's 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 the? I think just you know realizing a lot of the time, you know you're very you think it's all about you and your acting, and then you get on a set and you realize no, it's got to be about the lighting, the angles, how many takes we can get done in this amount of time. You know, if we've got kids on the set, we've got to get them off at a certain time. It's becomes it's almost easier once you get on set. It's mm. not so much about you. They they assume you've done all the work and they've cast you for a reason and you just do what you've been doing and that's it. And so part of me was like, wow, this is, I'm going to be able to do this. It's it's fine. <laughs> and then the costumes, right? Because it was these had kind of an 80s theme. So how much time did you have to spend in hair and makeup and costume? Amazing. The hair and makeup and costuming of this show was one of my favorite aspects, I said, I feel like I say that a lot, but it really was. Um, I was in hair and makeup. We did three tests before we even filmed. So 
in fact, Karen actually started off with like a mole, like a Cindy Crawford mole, and then that ended up getting getting cut. But we, I spent each day probably two and a half hours in hair and makeup because they had to give me that big crimped 80s hair look. And then I had, I think, a couple three-hour fittings where I would try on all these 80s clothes and it was so much fun. Originally, when we when I first got to Brisbane, I had a big fitting and I tried on a bunch of, of costumes and, and different things and they took photos and then they would send them off to the people at NBC who make all those final decisions. And then I wouldn't hear about what I was going to wear. I would just show up to, and in my trailer would be Karen's outfit of the day, uh, which was kind of fun. It was like a little surprise walking into your trailer each morning. But yeah, the clothes were incredible and they were all vintage, like the real deal 80s clothing, which I mean, I just had so much fun playing. I think because we're so different, I, I had so much fun. There were definitely challenges with her because she can come off really mean and very privileged. And uh, I had to really, when you're playing someone who's like that, you have to not judge them. So I basically decided that she was just very naive. And I think the reason that she likes Dwayne so much is because he's different and unconventional from the other people that she's been dating. So yeah, she's a super fun character to play. And she, she's based on a real person. Yes, she, I've been told she's an amalgamation of a couple girlfriends that Dwayne had, but Dwayne did tell me that Apparently, I really look like one of his girlfriends from when he was 15 at Freedom High School. He did tell me that. So he left me a, it was like a, like a voice message. And, and he said, if I ever find the photo, I'll have to pass it on. But I haven't seen what she actually looked like. But he said that apparently we, we really looked alike, which is, which is kind of crazy. I would, I would be playing that voice message to everyone. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit of a party trick now. Oh, <laughs> Dwayne, you know. <laughs> Does, does, does having to do an accent when you're performing, does that make it harder to focus on your performance? Some would say yes, but I find it helps me get into character a little bit more. It's kind of like when you when I put the costume on and my hair's done, I almost feel like I'm in Karen's body. When I'm doing the accent on top of that, it's almost like another layer of costuming or it really actually helps me to get into character. And when I was surrounded, a lot of our cast is American and New Zealand Canadian. We've sort of got a whole bunch, but... Uh, a lot of our cast is American and when I'd be around them, I would just talk American and it actually wasn't, wasn't that difficult for me. And I think I have a slight advantage with my mum being American, but for the most part, uh, I actually really enjoy doing accents. Did you, did you feel like you had to introduce the American cast to a lot of Australian culture? Yes. So we, I, <laughs> I took Bradley Constant, who plays 15-year-old Dwayne, and Taj Cross, who plays Gabe, to, we went, we did so much, so many tourist activities while we were in Brisbane, but their faces when they saw the koalas up close, oh my God, priceless. They <laughs> love the Australian animals and yeah, we, it was actually Bradley, when we have morning tea here, but Americans don't, they call that like recess or something or snack time morning tea you get like uh, you get a muffin it's it's like the snack you get in between breakfast and lunch yeah we yeah we call that um in primary school we called that uh fruit and juice and then in fruit and juice oh my gosh so bradley's going he thought it meant you get some tea and i'm going no 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 you get the snack and he's going why don't they just call that snack and i said yeah good point <laughs> Yeah, no, because yeah, tea in the UK is like dinner. So we would Yeah, no, he thought it meant actual tea. And he's going, why are they, is everyone offering me tea at like 11 in the morning? I don't want tea. I'm, I'm with Bradley, to be fair. I, that makes total sense. Yeah, no, that's the re- morning tea is recess or fruit and juice for us. Well, yeah, we had fruit and juice in primary school. In secondary school, it was called quarter, which is very, that's very like practical. Like, yeah, it's the quarter of the way through the day. Okay, that makes sense. Young Rock is, is, a, is a comedy. Do you, do you prefer working on comedy or do you prefer straight roles? That's hard. I love comedies because they're so fun. And on set, we had so many laughs and good times. But I would love, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm so early in my career. I just want to try everything still. So I would love to delve into like a mini series drama, like Big Little Lies, or I really want to watch Mayor of Easttown, which has just come out. Something like that would be super cool, mystery-wise, drama would be great. But I do love comedy, so it's 
it's hard. I'm really interested in doing everything. I'd go back to stage too. I'm yeah. Theater is great. It's just, I want to do it all still. <laughs> of course, of course. And um, I just got two little last questions for you. What's the best bit of acting advice you've ever heard? First of all, I would say don't be afraid to fail or kind of the same thing, letting it go. I think for a long time, I really did want to hold on to all my choices and all the work that I'd done. Like I had something to prove to the casting director. See, I've done everything. Like I'm, I'm the character. And I think once I learned that you have to let that go and, and go back to having fun, because that's why we, you know, you don't go into acting to, it's, it's about having fun. So once I remembered that, and went back to having fun and letting go and not being afraid to get things wrong was when I really grew as an actor, I would say. And if you weren't doing acting, what would you be doing? Such a hard question. I would probably, I mean, I'm still very musical. So if I could say singing, but that's also performing. So I don't know if that's allowed. Otherwise, I would probably be interested in doing psychology because I I think acting is almost a little bit like that. You delve into characters and why people make decisions. And I think that would be really interesting. Yes. That's a good point. Sorry about all the hard questions, by the way. Quite after quite a few work. questions, you were like, very hard questions. No, well, I just, I just, they're making me think. It's good. <laughs> and thanks so much for um, coming on the podcast. No, thank you so much. It's been so nice chatting.